Okay, so welcome to the deep dive. Uh, today we're diving into something I think a lot of people are really interested in and, uh, and frankly, kind of concerned about. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is artificial intelligence. Right. Um, and to sort of unpack that huge topic, yeah. uh, we're going to be looking at a particular perspective. Okay. Um, and that is from Yuval Noah Harari. Oh, interesting. You've probably heard of him. He's the author of the book Sapiens, which uh, has become kind of a modern classic. It really has, yeah. Um, and he has a lot of really interesting things to say about AI and what he thinks the biggest concerns are and where he thinks we should really be focusing our attention. Yeah, I think what's really helpful about his perspective is that he's able to kind of zoom out and look at the really big picture. You know, yeah. he's not just focused on like the technical details or the latest advancements, but he's really thinking about like the long term societal and even philosophical implications of AI. Yeah. And I think that's what makes his work so compelling. Yeah. And so we've been going through this um, interview he recently gave. Uh, where he lays out his thinking on this. Yeah. And so for our deep dive today, okay. we're going to try to extract the most crucial arguments and kind of warnings yeah. from his perspective. Yeah. Uh, just to give you a sense of like, yeah. what are the things that he's most concerned about and why should you be concerned about them too? Yeah. I think that's so important because, you know, there's so much information out there about AI. Right. It can be overwhelming. You know, you've got all these headlines and opinions. Yeah. It's hard to sort of like cut through all the noise and figure out. Yeah. What matters. Exactly what really matters. Yeah. So let's uh, jump right into it. Okay. Sounds good. So one of the things that Harari starts off by uh, by talking about is yeah. is the sort of fundamental nature of AI mm -hmm. and how that's different from humans. Right. Um, and he talks about AI being inorganic. Okay. So it's not bound by the same limitations mm -hmm. that we are as biological organisms. Right. Like, you know, things like seasons and life and death. Right. Exactly. Rest, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. AI doesn't need to sleep. Exactly. It doesn't get sick. Yeah. You know, it, it can just keep going. It's constantly evolving. Yeah. And it's evolving at an exponential rate. Yeah. That's a key point because he talks about how AI is capable of this kind of continuous and rapid progress right that's just not possible for humans yeah you know we're yeah. limited by our biology by the pace of evolution exactly but ai can just keep iterating and improving at an incredible speed yeah i mean think about just like the processing power yeah that ai has access to right versus our own brains it's not even a fair comparison it's not even close right, right? um and so that's one of the things that i think is really striking about harari's perspective yeah is that He's not necessarily saying that AI is evil or that it's going to like take over the world in some kind of Hollywood movie scenario. Mm -hmm. But he's saying that we need to be realistic about the fundamental differences yeah. between AI and humans. Right. And recognize that there are certain things that AI is just going to be inherently better at. Exactly. And I think that leads him to this really important conclusion, Okay, which is that we cannot win a speed race against AI algorithms. Okay, so explain that a little bit more. What does he mean by that? So basically he's saying that if we try to compete with AI on its own terms, right? you know, in terms of processing speed, yeah. efficiency, yeah. you know, just sheer computational power, yeah. we're going to lose. Yeah. It's not a competition that we're built for. Yeah, it's like we're trying to outrun a sports car on foot. Exactly. It's just not going to happen. Right. So the implication of that is that we need to shift our focus okay. away from trying to keep pace with AI right. and towards understanding and safeguarding the qualities that make us uniquely human. Right. So it's not about becoming like AI. No. It's about figuring out what makes us different. Exactly. And how do we preserve those things? Yeah. And, you know, he even uses this really interesting phrase. Okay. He talks about the importance of humanity. Okay. And how we need to protect that. So what does he mean by humanity in this context? Well, I think he's referring to the whole range of qualities that define us as human beings. Yeah. You know, things like our emotions, yeah. our creativity, our empathy. Right. Our ability to connect with each other on a deeper level. Yeah. Our values. Our morals. Exactly. All of those things that AI doesn't necessarily possess. Okay. And, you know, he argues that this is especially important for the generations that are growing up now. Right. The so-called AI natives. Exactly. They're the ones who are going to be most exposed to AI from a young age. Yeah. And so it's crucial for them to have a strong sense of their own humanity, right. you know, to understand what makes them different from machines. So it's not just about teaching them how to code or how to use AI. No. It's about teaching them how to be human in an age of AI. 
Exactly. And, you know, this brings up another really interesting point that he makes. Okay. Which is about the need for rest. Okay. He argues that one of the things that distinguishes humans from AI is that we need to rest. Yeah, we can't just keep going 24-7. Right. We have biological rhythms. Right. We need sleep. We need downtime. Yeah. And he even talks about his own practice of meditating for two hours every day. That's right. As a way to kind of manage the pace of modern life. Yeah. And to kind of slow down his own human algorithm, as he puts it. Right. Because if AI is constantly processing information at lightning speed, mm -hmm. we need to be able to step back yeah. and reflect and process things in our own way. Exactly. And, you know, I think this is a really important message for all of us, mm. not just for AI natives, but for anyone who's feeling overwhelmed by the pace of technological change. Yeah. It's okay to slow down. Yeah. It's okay to take breaks. Yeah. It's actually essential for our well-being. Yeah. That's part of what makes us human. Exactly. Okay, so we've talked about the sort of fundamental differences between AI and humans mm -hmm. and the need to preserve our own humanity. Right. But Harari also has some really pointed critiques about the way that we're currently approaching the development of AI. Yeah, and I think this is where his perspective gets really interesting and also a little bit concerning. Okay. Um, one of the things that he's really critical of is this idea of an AI arms race. Okay, what does he mean by that? So you know how there's this kind of competition going on between major powers like the U.S. and China? Right, for global dominance. Exactly. And a big part of that competition is about developing the most advanced AI. Yeah. You know, each country wants to be the leader in AI because they see it as a key to military superiority, yeah. economic dominance, you know, all of that. Yeah, they want to be the superpower in AI. Exactly. And Harari is really worried about this because he sees it as a really dangerous way to frame the development of AI. Okay, why is that? Well, he argues that if we continue to view AI through this lens of global competition, right. the ultimate outcome might not be the supremacy of any one nation. Okay. It might be the supremacy of AI itself. So he's saying that AI could actually become the dominant force. Exactly. And, you know, he emphasizes that the potential impact of AI is much greater than anything we've seen before. Yeah. He says it's not just another industrial revolution. Okay. It's something completely different. Okay. He says it's more like the agricultural revolution. Okay. Which, you know, completely transformed human society. Yeah. And he thinks that AI has the potential to do the same thing. So it's not just about new gadgets or new technologies. Yeah. It's about a fundamental shift in the way that we live and work and organize ourselves as a society. Exactly. And I think that's why he's so concerned about this idea of an AI arms race. Yeah. Because he thinks it's blinding us to the bigger picture. Right. We're so focused on winning the race yeah. that we're not thinking about where the finish line actually leads. So we're so busy trying to beat each other mm -hmm. that we're not thinking about what happens if we actually succeed. Exactly. And, you know, he's not alone in this concern. Yeah. There are a lot of people who are worried about the potential for AI to become too powerful. Yeah. And I think that leads to another one of his big concerns, okay. which is the issue of inequality. Right. Mm. Um, he argues that the AI revolution has the potential to create levels of inequality unlike anything we've ever seen before. Mm hmm. And he has a very specific reason for believing that. Okay. What is that? Well, he says that if you look at past industrial revolutions, yeah. human labor was always a form of capital. Okay. You know, even in exploitative systems, right. the masses had a certain degree of leverage because the state needed people to work. Right. They needed people to run the factories. Exactly. And so even in dictatorships, yeah. there were limits to how much the state could exploit its citizens. Because they needed them. Exactly. To actually do the work. Right. But Harari argues that AI fundamentally changes this equation. Okay. Because AI doesn't need people. Right. If algorithms can perform tasks more efficiently yeah. without the need for wages or health care or breaks, yeah. then traditional forms of worker power, like strikes, mm -hmm will likely become ineffective. Right, because if you have a factory that's entirely run by AI, yeah. it doesn't matter if the human workers go on strike. Exactly. The machines will just keep working. Right. And so Harari's concern is that this could lead to a situation where a very small elite mm. who control the AI yeah. 
accumulate vast amounts of wealth and power yeah. while the rest of humanity is left behind. So it's not just about job displacement. No. It's about a fundamental shift in the balance of power. Exactly. And, you know, this is a concern that's shared by a lot of people, yeah. not just Harari. Yeah. There's a growing recognition that AI has the potential to exacerbate existing inequalities right. unless we take steps to mitigate those risks. Okay, so given all of these concerns... Mm -hmm. What does Harari think we should be doing about it? Well, he does offer some solutions. Okay. Um, he emphasizes two key measures that he believes are essential for minimizing the risks of AI. Okay, what are those? The first is preventing AI from impersonating humans. He says that this is already becoming a huge problem. You yeah. know, with AI-generated text and images and videos, yeah. it's getting harder and harder to distinguish between what's real and what's fake. Right. And he specifically points to social media as a prime example yes. of how AI is being used to manipulate people. Exactly. You know, AI can be used to create fake accounts, hmm. spread disinformation, yeah. so discord. Yeah. And it's becoming increasingly sophisticated. Yeah, it's getting harder to tell the difference. Exactly. And so Harari argues that we need to develop ways to identify and prevent AI from impersonating humans. Yeah, because... If we can't trust the information that we're getting, mm -hmm. then it undermines our ability to make informed decisions. Exactly. And it also erodes trust in each other, right. which is essential for a functioning society. Yeah. So that's his first key measure. Okay. And what about the second one? The second measure is about accountability. Okay. He says that we need to hold the developers of AI algorithms. So the companies? Yes. The companies and organizations that create and deploy AI accountable for the outcomes and impacts of their creations. Yeah. He says that this is crucial for fostering ethical development practices mm -hmm. and for minimizing potential harms. Right. So it's not enough to just create powerful AI. Yeah. We also need to make sure that it's being used responsibly. Exactly. And that the people who are creating it are held accountable for the consequences. Right. And, you know, this is a really complex issue because it raises questions about who should be responsible. Right. How do we define responsibility? Yeah. What are the mechanisms for enforcement? Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Yeah. But Harari argues that it's something that we absolutely have to grapple with right. if we want to avoid the worst case scenarios. OK, so we've talked about some of the things that Harari thinks we should be doing mm -hmm. to mitigate the risks of AI. Right. But I'm curious to know what he thinks about the potential benefits of AI. Well, he does acknowledge that AI has the potential to do a lot of good. Well, yeah. You know, it can help us solve some of the world's most pressing problems, yeah. like climate change and disease. Yeah. And it can also enhance our lives in many ways. Right. But he's also very clear that the benefits of AI are not guaranteed. Okay. He says that it all depends on how we develop and deploy AI. So it's not just about the technology itself. Yeah. It's about the choices that we make. Exactly. About how we use it. Right. And, you know, one of the things that he keeps coming back to is this idea of humanity. Right. He says that even if AI becomes incredibly intelligent. Yeah. Even if it surpasses human intelligence in many ways. Yeah. There will still be something fundamentally different about humans. Okay. He says that humans have a kind of experience or understanding of the world mm. that AI will never be able to replicate. And why is that? Well, he argues that it's because humans have bodies. Okay. We experience the world through our senses. Right. We feel emotions. Yeah. We have relationships. Yeah. All of these things are rooted in our physical embodiment. Right. And he says that this gives us a kind of wisdom yeah. that AI will never be able to achieve. So even if AI can process information faster than us, mm -hmm. even if it can learn new things more quickly, yeah. it will never be able to truly understand what it means to be human exactly because it will never have that lived experience right of being in a body yeah and you know this is a really profound point yeah because it suggests that there are limits to what ai can do yeah it's not just about the technology itself it's yeah. about the fundamental nature of being human exactly okay so to kind of bring this all together mm -hmm. what are the key takeaways from harari's perspective on ai well, I think the biggest takeaway is that we need to be very careful about how we develop and deploy AI. Yeah. We need to be aware of the potential risks. Right. And we need to take steps to mitigate those risks. Right. But we also need to be mindful of the potential benefits. 
And we need to make sure that AI is used for good yeah. and not for harm. And I think that's a really important message for all of us. Yeah. Because we're all going to be affected by AI in some way. Absolutely. Whether we realize it or not. Yeah. And so it's up to all of us mm -hmm. to make sure that AI is used in a way that benefits humanity. Yeah. And not the other way around. Exactly. And so as we kind of wrap up our deep dive today. Okay. I want to leave you with a final thought. Okay. Harari talks a lot about the importance of truth hmm. and how we need to make sure that AI is aligned with truth. Right. And I think that's a really important point to consider. Yeah. Because in a world where AI is becoming increasingly powerful, mm -hmm. it's going to be more important than ever yeah. to be able to discern uh -huh. what's true right. and what's not. Exactly. And that's something that we all need to be working on yeah. individually and collectively because right. the stakes are very high Yeah. if we allow AI to control the narrative. If we allow it to determine what's true and what's false, yeah. then we're in big trouble. Right. So it's not just about the technology itself. No. It's about our own values mm. and our own commitment to truth. Right. And I think that's a really powerful message to end on. Yeah. So... As you go about your day to day, yeah. think about how you can cultivate and protect mm -hmm. your own commitment to truth yeah. and how you can help to create a world mm -hmm. where AI is used to promote truth yeah. and not to undermine it. I think that's a great place to leave it. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. We'll see you next time.